Hello plants people, it's Nora the Lekker Queen. I am going to chop up this two meter high golden pothos, put it on a different moss pole and put the top cutting into lecker. I'm gonna show you how I do this and I will show you what the plant eventually looks like and how it starts to grow in lecker. So yes, I am going to chop off the top part. So that part of the plant, I'm gonna chop that off from the bottom part and I'm going to separate the two pieces of the plant. I am then going to get the top part of the plant and tease out as much of the moss as I can and mount that onto a new moss pole. I am then going to get that top bit and put it up in a semi-hydroponic setup. I will put it up in Lekka and watch it grow. I have here a blade. I have sterilized this blade and that's what I'm going to use to separate the top part of the plant from the bottom part of the plant. I've got scissors to help me cut the plastic sheet back and then I've got some wire cutters that's going to help me trim the wire mesh of the moss pole. So before we get started, I just want to show you what this plant looks like. So I've had this plant from when it was really, really small. And as you can see, the leaves are just fantastic. Um, I'll show you what it looks like right at the top. It's, it's literally gotten right up to the ceiling. And unless, I mean, there's, there's nothing else to do. I've only got two options with this plant at this stage. I can either cut a hole in my ceiling and have it keep growing or chop it up. There's, there's really no two ways about it. So obviously the only route to take is to chop it up. So we're gonna do that, but I will show you what the plant looks like right at the top. So that's my plant. And as you go up, 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 you can see that it's gotten all the way to the ceiling and there's just nowhere for this plant to go. I want to leave the bottom bit with, you know, enough of a plant to keep going. And I want the top bit to still have, you know, to still look good and still be big. So I'm probably just gonna do it half and half really. So about, so about there is where I'm going to chop it up. So if I'm chopping it up about there, so that brings me to here. So I need to cut this bit off the plastic sheet so that it can be separated from the bottom bit. So I'm gonna make the cut here and I've got a pair of scissors and just making sure I'm not cutting into the aerial roots. So I've separated this top part from the lower part. So once I detach this top part of the plant from the bottom part, the sheet will be able to break free. I am now going to actually make the cut on the plant itself. The aerial roots are actually stuck in the moss pole. So even though I cut the plant, it's actually not going to fall off and I'll be able to control it once I actually separate the moss pole from the metal rods. So I will now cut the plant and I am cutting the plant with my pre-sterilized knife. And I am not using scissors to make this cut because the stems are actually quite thick and very woody. So if I used a pair of scissors, I'd actually be damaging the stem because I'm not getting a clean cut. The stem is very, very woody. So I am going to get my knife and make my cut along the diagonal. See, that is quite, quite, I'll put my hand up there just so I don't cut myself. So that is now cut. I will now cut the other stem, which is this one. This one should be a lot easier because it's not as thick. The plant is separated. You can see the plant has now been cut. I'm now going to turn the plant around and separate the metal rods from the plastic sheet. So I've got my wire cutters here. They're really good for cutting off the heads of the cable ties and clip that off and that comes off. I will now cut off all the cable ties that attach the metal rods to the moss pole. But while I'm doing that, I'm just keeping a hand on the moss pole so it doesn't fall over. 
the metal rods are now away and the plant is over here. So this is now going to be interesting because it's not just coming off because obviously there are roots that are now growing into the moss and there actually are some other moss um, metal rods that are in this moss pole. This one comes off, I'll just take that off. What I will now do is remove these little cable ties that are holding the plant in place here uh, in the hopes that that will make it easier for me to lift off the top part of the plant. There's other metal rods, you can see that one. That's, those are metal rods that I put when I first made this moss pole. But when I did the extension and put the bigger metal rods, I just left them in there. But at the time, I was actually putting the metal rods inside the moss pole, which is something I very much don't recommend now because you'll have the roots interacting with this pole and it might be pretty difficult to get the plant out if the roots are entangled around the metal rod. So I don't encourage that, but I'm really lucky in this instance that the roots have not actually interacted with the metal rod. So there she goes. Uh, my plant is falling. My plant is now detaching. And I will try and see. This is a fabulous example of what happens inside a moss pole. And this is actually what I was talking about earlier. So I've got this metal rod inside the moss pole. And what's happened is these roots have actually grown around the metal rod. So this will make it just a little bit more difficult for me to separate this plant from um, this metal rod. It's not impossible, but it just makes things a little bit more difficult. But you know, if I had had this outside the plastic sheeting, this wouldn't be an issue. So that's why I recommend that the, the, the metal rods be actually put outside. Okay, so that's that now. And now I need to see if I can actually pry this away. This plant is being held together only by the wire mesh. So in theory, if I cut the wire mesh off, it will now separate from the bottom part. So that side of the mesh is lifted off. I'm now gonna do the other side. So I've got my plant on my kitchen bench top and I'm going to start separating the roots from the moss. So I'm just gonna get rid of all these cable ties. So that's what my plant looks like on the inside. So let me see what that will look like. That is a heck of a lot of roots living in here. That is just a huge density of roots. So the ones at the top, the moss is actually easier to separate because uh, the area roots haven't had as much time to enmesh in the moss. So that is what that looks like. Look at that one. These are new roots. You can actually see that they're new. Oh wow, a moss pole is a fantastic thing. So that is as much of the moss that I can actually separate. And these are the aerial roots. So this is the root system that's actually going to support this plant until it has long enough roots that are going to go and grow into the lecker. So that right there is my plant. That's what that looks like. And that is the front. So I'm going to use the same uh, sphagnum moss that I've taken out of it to build a new moss pole for it. So what I want to do with this plant is I don't want a moss pole that is as wide as the one I had last time. I actually want a smaller one and I will put a plastic sheet backing, but I want a smaller pole. So what I probably want to do is cut off some of this excess mesh and size that up 
with the plastic sheet backing that I've got for her. I've got my wire cutters here and I'll cut off about three, oh, maybe four. One, two, three, four of those boxes because I want a nice smaller moss pole. This is what that now looks like. So it's gonna be nice and compact. So as a result of trimming off some of the mesh, you can see one of these plants was actually right at the edge of that moss pole. So I will just rearrange it and put it back in the middle and make sure that the aerial roots are actually coming through the mesh and will be living inside the moss. So I'll now get my um, plastic sheeting, attach that to one side of the metal mesh and then start to pack it up with moss. So of course I've got my trusty cable ties. What would we do without cable ties? So this is where the fun begins. So we are now going to pack this up with moss and close it off. But before we do that, I've got these holes in my plastic sheet backing and that's what I'm going to use to secure my metal rod to my moss pole. So in order for me to do that, I need to have these cable ties already put in the holes. Otherwise, it's going to be such a hard time for me to get done. So I'm putting those in now. This is a very, very important step because we are going to have a metal rod that's going to go through the middle of this moss pole and it needs to be secured. So now I'm going to get my moss and fill up my pole. So remember, try not putting, packing so much moss that it's compact, just enough for the moss pole to be able to do its job. So at the bottom here, I've got the area roots that are coming down. So I'm gonna leave those because I want those to grow into my lecker eventually. So I'm gonna test that out and see how that looks and feels. That feels good, might put a little bit more. So I've actually got leftover moss that, you know, is perfectly fine. So I'm not going to throw that away, I can reuse that. So I am now going to just close off that moss pole with my cable ties, trusty cable ties. Off we go. Okay, that's all done. I will now cut off the redundant bits of cable tie there. So for this particular plant, when it's ready to go into Lekka, I'm going to put it in a 14 centimeter pot. Now, I am actually going to future-proof this plant. I know I am going to be extending it. I know it's a big and heavy plant. So I am going to put a very, very long, big metal rod. I will attach this to the moss pole. So this metal rod is 1.8 meters high. So I am going to attach this one to the moss pole. But before I do that, I need to figure out how much of this pole is going to be in the pot. So I need to get a cable tie and just put a guide there to let me know where that level is so I can attach the moss pole to this rod at the appropriate place. So get my cable tie and that's where that's going to be. So that will be perfect. I now have my Hole and I am going to attach that. So I got really big cable ties this time. That is the metal rod attached and I've got all the others. I will attach it throughout the length of the moss pole. So that is my moss pole attached to my metal rod and I will just cut off these bits of cable tie. 
some of the roots are actually not directly inside the mesh. So they will be fine as long as they're in direct contact with the wet moss. So in order to make sure that they are really in direct contact, I'm going to put my Velcro plant tie just to make that plant sit nice and tight next to that moss. There we have it. That is my plant attached to a new moss pole and I am going to pot this up in Lekka when the plant is ready. This plant now has, this plant has these woody stems. Um, the stems that I showed you earlier are very woody. I need those to callus over. So I am not going to put them into a water solution or into Lekka right away because they're quite woody and if I did that then the plant runs the risk of actually rotting. So I'm going to let that this plant sit for a few hours and then I am going to put it in a ceramic pot and in that ceramic pot I'm going to put a growth technology clonex clone solution and root zone mixture so that is my special source. And the way I will put this plant up in the ceramic pot is that only the small roots that are coming through here, these roots, only they are going to be exposed to the liquid. The stem is very much not going to be exposed to the liquid. And I will be making sure that I water this moss pole regularly with this special source solution because the plant is now really only relying on the area roots. So I'm gonna make sure that until I've got a proper root system going and the area roots have really latched into the new moss pole, I am gonna make sure that those roots are moist and that will be how that plant is deriving nutrition. So I'll put it up in that solution, put it in a nice warm spot, lots of light, put it right in front of the grow light and hope that everything goes well. So those are my plants right there. So that's the top of my plant there. So it's still quite, you know, quite big, but look at that. How gorgeous, how glorious is that? It's still quite big. So that's the top portion of my plant. I'm just leaning that against that wall because it's, I haven't secured it in its pot yet, so I don't want it to topple over. So that just leans over there. And this is the bottom. So that's what that now looks like. Um, I'm just gonna let those stems dry off as well. You could put a little bit of cinnamon on them. Um, cinnamon has been known to be quite protective for when you make your cuttings. Um, that's, that's an option. Or you could just leave them, they'll dry over, they'll color over, and then they'll be fine. What will happen is you will have some new growth points over here and the plant will continue to grow. Some lucky person is going to receive this plant um, after a few weeks. I just wanna, I'll keep it here with me just to make sure that everything is going okay. And just so I can show you what that plant starts to do after a few weeks. And then after that, I will send it off to its forever home because it is living in soil. So it is now time for it to go and I will concentrate all my energies on the big one back there that is now going to be living in semi-hydroponics. So I will see you next time when I give you an update on how these two guys are going. Thanks. It's been a month and my chopped up plant is still alive. So winning. <laughs> this right here is the bottom part of the plant. I do have it up on a stool and I'll show you the whole plant in a minute. But what I really, really want to show you at this point is the fact that A, the plant is still alive, it's still very healthy, but the plant is now developing additional growth points. This is where I chopped the plant in half. So this is the bottom section of the plant. And if you look at this stem over here, this little green portion here is the additional 
growth point that has now developed because I chopped the plant up. So the plant is now going to continue growing from here and that'll go up there. I haven't seen a growth point for this second stem. I'm sure it's still coming, it's just not here yet. This, this stem is a lot more woody, so maybe that's why it's taking a lot longer to form, I don't know. But the fact that I've seen this growth point and the other growth point on this, st on this stem says to me that this plant is going to continue life. And this is the, what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you that when you chop up a plant, the plant that's been left at the bottom is still going to continue to grow because all it does is develop an additional growth point and away it goes. Nature has a way of finding pathways to continue. It creates new pathways to continue life and life is not lost. So those of you who might have thought, oh my God, she's chopping up the plant. Um, no, this will continue and it will continue to be a gorgeous, gorgeous plant and it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what happens when you chop up a plant. So I'll show you what this one looks like from the bottom to the top. It's still quite big as you can see, um, just about getting to my height, but it still looks lovely. Now let's go to the exciting bit, the top portion of the plant. So, ooh, this is the top portion of the plant. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that. Look, just, I don't, you know, I'm in such awe of this plant. I can't even, I'm absolutely speechless. Look at the size of this. And these are the new leaves that were coming and they're looking so yellow and they're looking fabulous. But what's really important to note is look at how healthy this plant looks. It still looks very, very good, despite the fact that it's not attached to the bottom part of the plant. It's been living like this for a month, for a month. And I'll show you what the root system is like. That's it. There are virtually no roots over there. So there were some scraggly roots that were there when I chopped it up, but you know, those are, you know, they did not really, you know, grow bigger within that month. So this is it. The only reason this plant is alive is because I am keeping the moss pond moist. So the area roots are actually keeping this plant alive. But what I want to do today is I want to put this plant up in Lekka because at the moment it's literally just, you know, leaning on a wall like this in a, you know, like a bucket or something. That's not ideal. What I do want it to learn to do is actually to live in Lekka. Um, I'll show you something else that I did with this plant. Um, oh, I don't know if you can see that. So if you look at this stem here, I actually cut off the tip of this stem because it was, it was actually quite long. I didn't quite like what it looked like. like. So I just chopped off the tip and like that plant behind me, it is just going to get an additional growth point and it'll continue growing. But I'll show you what that tip is looking like. So this is my tip. All right, so it's, it's gorgeous. It's really, really gorgeous. If you look back here, this is where it was actually attached to the moss pole. You can see points where, this is where the area roots were, were starting to develop. And all I did was just pull it off from the moss pole and I've put it in Lekka and it's living in a reservoir and yeah, it's, doing okay. So I'm quite curious to see what's going to happen with this. Actually, this, this is a little experiment. I just thought what will happen if I chop off the tip of this big, big plant and see what happens. So that's the tip. I'll keep you posted. This is one of the reasons it's taken me so long to actually pot up this plant because I needed these stems to callus over because you don't want a lot of moisture going into these because if these absorb too much water, then your whole stem could rot and you could lose your plant. So these are well calloused over. And when I pot them up in my Lekka, this is the pot I'm going to use. It's a 14 centimeter pot. It will go there. 
So you can see that these stems are actually going to be suspended right there at the top and not be inside the lecker. So, and that's a really important thing, again, to prevent a lot of moisture going into the stems. Because remember, the roots are going to come down through there and grow into the pot where the lecker is. I've got my plant here. Oh gosh, this, this might not be the easiest thing for me to show you because these leaves just keep getting in the way and I can't do anything about that. Um, so I've got my plant in my 14 centimeter pot there and I'm gonna start filling that up with lecker. So as you can see, I now have my plant living in this pot. Um, however, because the plant is not really anchored in the lecker at the moment, it's still quite precarious. So I'm now going to get my ceramic pot. This is now my golden ivy two meter high pole potted up in lecker on a moss pole and steady. You know, I have had to use a ceramic pot to keep it upright. So that is, that is the ceramic pot that I'm using to provide stability to the moss pole. And because of that ceramic pot, it's not falling. So full disclosure, after I wrapped up this video, I was trying to put that moss pole away, the tip moss pole and oh my God, that plant just kept falling over. So clearly using a 14 centimeter pot was a bad idea on my part. So thankfully I had a 20 centimeter pot hanging about and I quickly just uh, switched that over and the plant is now a lot more stable. So forget everything I said, we do not use the 14 centimeter pot. I definitely use a 20 centimeter pot, which is a lot of lecker. I don't really like to do that, but for the sake of stability, this is what I needed to do for this plant. I'll show you what it looks like. So that one right there is a 20 centimeter pot and that plant just stays upright so much better. The stems are still not going to be in direct contact with the nutrient solution. So I think that should be fine. So all I need to do now is just keep this pole moist and see where we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. If you found value in this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps my channel. So I will see you next time for more planty adventures. Bye.